What's up everyone, it's Guy here with the Minority Thinker. Hope y'all doing well today. Now I just want to get straight to the point. I'm dropping this video of why there's reasons to be bullish on Bitcoin right now. I know there's a massive amount of fear and bearish on Bitcoin. Now I'm not here to tell you Bitcoin will moon or set a timeline that Bitcoin will hit 100,000 by such and such dates. But what I'm here to tell you is that most pundits are wrong about Bitcoin fear and what happened with recent events proved more than ever that Bitcoin is not only here to stay, but soon to be the digital goal. Okay, let's take a look here at this headline over the past week. Bitcoin hits break even for the first time in years as it blows past 47,200 before selling down, back down. Let's see here, guys. This is Sunday. This past weekend, it basically uptick bitcoin uptick to 47 i think 47.5 let's take a look at the current price currently at 47.3 47,300 it's actually shot up 37,500 okay so that's significant because it just basically break even now since the, since the year started but if you really look at it the deck screener here I did a video on this why I think the conflict between Russia and Ukraine proves that Bitcoin, despite what uh, what most pundit fear that because of the war it will crash the Bitcoin, but it proves otherwise because look at this chart here. The war the conflict started in February twenty fourth. Since then, it's up 37%. Okay, here's what some of the pundits said about Bitcoin before the conflict started. Bitcoin isn't done falling, how it could drop to $10,000. Some of the headlines, Bitcoin skid to the six-month low as fears of Ukraine conflict shakes markets. January 24th. Um, and then you got, you got guys like this, Samba Research, 10,000 Bitcoin price, next stop, breaks it down. So you think, this guy thinks that it's going to go to 10, and this is a couple of days before the war. So as you can see here, a chart, guys, 24th, ever since they predicted it. This is where it started, and what happened, it shots up. So it's completely opposite of what they're saying. So all these planets are completely wrong. Some probably still think that it's going to go down more. So why I think it's significant? Again, uh, I made a video that the conflict, major conflict, this is a first for Bitcoin, and the test Bitcoin uh, and now that this is happening almost a month now since February 24th now it's March 29th it went up 37 percent so with that time frame of one month it shots up so it's not it's not going down but it go back up uh, it's shooting back up so that's a positive sign that there's a demand for Bitcoin doing uncertain times. So that's a very good sign, guys, that Bitcoin is moving toward that types of uh, gold status. And what are some of the news that's, uh, that's good news for Bitcoin? Terra Luna, co-founder of use massive 3 billion Bitcoin purchase is already underway. Stable issue of Terra was moving forward. It's planned to accumulate a massive show of Bitcoin reserves. Do Kwan, Terra founder and chief CEO, says that Twitter said Twitter that they have three billion in funds ready to see this reserve after announcing last week a Terra plan to accumulate ten billion worth of Bitcoin in total. That's massive, guys. So Terra Luna buying Bitcoin. So there's a they're buying Bitcoin, ten billion dollars worth 
This is no chump change. Massive amount of purchasing of Bitcoin as their reserve uh, or their peg for the U.S. Terra. So that's a huge statement there. Um, and I think this is only the start. Terra Luna, I believe, will pioneer this and other um, protocols will follow. And this statement here is basically put in a trust that Bitcoin is, is here to stay. Bitcoin is gold, digital gold, that they are willing to peg their um, native tokens to Bitcoin as a reserve. I believe many will follow this pattern. This, If they prove to be successful, which seems like they are right now, this will have a domino effect and the whole um, you know, decentralized DeFi and all the protocols. All right, so let's get back to what I think is the main reason where the conflict will push Bitcoin to be the digital goal. This here, here guys. Russia may be accepting Bitcoin as payment for oil and gas. Now that's massive. I never heard that before. Obviously, Ukraine and Russia are accepting, um, you know, donations and stuff like that via cryptocurrency. Ukraine, especially. Uh, as far as Russia, we don't know how much. But Ukraine, I believe, up to a hundred millions uh, of cryptocurrencies being. Uh, being funded but this massive here guys so Russia may accept Bitcoin as a form of payment for its energy export of oil and gas the head of the country energy committee announced Thursday the move is part of country bids to decrease the use of euro and dollar and substitute it with its own ruble and national currency of its ally countries such as China and Turkey the committee leader, Pavel Zelovny, made a televised announcement saying the decision was made at a re as a reaction to the sanction that Russia is facing due to war on Ukraine. Zelovny indicated that Western countries still importing oil and gas from Russia will have to pay rubles or gold. You know what happened to gold during the similar situations here 1970 with the oil crisis in the 1970 I'll show you a chart similarly now isn't that ironic that now we're talking about 2022 we're talking about crypto or specifically Bitcoin this also includes European countries that are not allied with Russia Zavani's comments were proposed and not a confirmed action. The set of currency may vary the normals practice. If there are Bitcoins, we will trade in Bitcoins. So they open the option for Bitcoins in exchange for oil and gas. And that's massive, guys. Anything other than euro or dollars. Again, guys, oil fuel the economy, fuel the world, okay? Uh, let's get back to that goal in 1970 real quick. Let me take a look at gold prices. This is ironic, right? So let's say 1970, can you see? This is the fear and doom for gold. Most, if you zoom out of gold, for the past hundred years, it's not as stable as one would think, right? Look at this. This is super macro, right? 1934, 752, and the doom all the way down to guess what? 1970, 262 dollars. And this is the energy crisis, guys. The embargo. Oil embargo, and guess what? Pr 
prices of gold shot up. I mean, from 265 to 20, to call this 2500. 1980. It's within 10 years. Okay. So now I see a little bit of a parallel. Again, this is my opinions. DYOR, do your own research. No more videos for purpose of education, entertainment only. Financial advice. That said, there is a parallel, guys. 1970, 2022. All involved oil. And if the Bitcoin is digital gold, similar to physical gold in 1970, we're in a parallel, guys. See how is the price is depressed until that embargo plus inflation. 1970 is a massive inflation. And guess where people are putting their money? So as you can see, guys, so with that, Russia making this announcement that they'll accept Bitcoin payment for oil and gas. Um, nation states, other nation states, you don't think they look at this and say, oh, maybe we'll, we'll see what Russia is doing. See what I'm saying? I just want to put it out there, guys. Let's get a backdrop on how an oil shortage in the United shaped today's economy. So I want to say that this headline will change how oil shortage in 2022 shaped Bitcoin's revolutions. <laughs> But let's take a look at this right here. This is a very interesting article. Credit suite ensuring new financial order will benefit Bitcoin. This is published, you know, a couple, couple weeks ago. Foundation of Bretton Woods 2 crumbled last week when G7 seized Russia foreign exchange reserves and investment bank. And the investment bank said, Russia-Ukraine war will create a new world financial order from which Bitcoin is set to benefit, according to Credits Suite. Sultan Pozar, global head of short-term interest rate strategy at the Giant Investment Bank, wrote in Monday report, the Western sanctions on Russia are likely to cause a paradigm shift in the way the world organizes money and reserves Bretton Wood three kind of scenario. Exactly what I'm saying. Other country will look at this and say, hey, how can we get around, um, you know, if we get, if the U.S. and its allies can sanction Russia, which is, you know, a power, a powerhouse, imagine, you know, other country will look into it that from the Bretton Woods era backed by gold billion to Bretton Wood two backed by inside money, more like oil, to Bretton Wood three backed by outside money. Pozar argues that the fall of Bretton Woods two ensue last week as G five country decided to seize Russia foreign exchange reserves, leading to a rise of outside money. Reserve kept as commodity over inside money, reserve kept as liabilities of global financial institutions. We are witnessing the birth of Bretton Woods III, a new world monetary order centered around commodity-based currency in the East that will likely weaken the Euro-Dollar system and also contribute to inflationary forces in the West. Okay, guys. Russia, a surplus agent in the financial system, can now no longer make use of hefty FX reserves it accumulated through its commodity export over the decades to defend its falling ruble 
or aids its local economy. <clears throat> Moreover, Russia's ability to export its commodity has been severely hurt due to bias strikes in the West. What we are seeing in the 50-year anniversary of the 1973 OPEC supply shock is something similar but sustainably worse. The 2020, 2022 Russia supply shock, which isn't driven by supplier, but the consumer. Strategist wrote, the aggressor in the geopolitical arena is being punished by sanction, and sanction-driven commodity price moves threaten the financial stability in the West. Pozar argues that while Western central banks cannot close spreads between Russia and non-Russia commodity prices, a sanction leads them in an opposite direction. The People Banks of China can, as in as it banks of sovereign who can dance to its own tune. You believe that the West can craft sanction the maximize pain for Russia or minimize financial stability risk and price stability risk in the West? You could also believe in unicorns. And outside money keeps trumping inside money. This crisis will likely emerge and, and end differently than other and all others than all other ever since Nixon broke off the gold standard in 1971, which marked the end of an era commodity based money. When this crisis and war is over, the US dollar should be much weaker, and on the flip side, the remedy much stronger, backed by a basket of commodities. Poser wrote. After this war is over, money will never be the same again. And Bitcoin, if it still exists then, will probably benefit from all of this. See, guys, that's a massive statement. This is an insider that's talking here. And Bitcoin, as we know it, benefit from this conflict because it's outside money now and Russia and many other countries are looking to other forms of currency other than euro and dollars and the top candidate obviously gold and Bitcoin so we'll see how it goes but again Bitcoin will will be still around. So if I was to bet on anything, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine will soon prove the Bitcoin will be digital gold. That's my opinion. The money will never be the same. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Thanks for watching my videos, guys. Um, minority Thinker here. If you like my content, you like my the, the stuff that I'm putting out here, please do support me, like, and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit that notification button as well so that you can get uh, up to date the uh, videos that I'm going to drop. All right, guys, so that's that and done. I'm out. Cheers.